Before we start tonight's new video, I would like to thank our sponsor, Refresh Candle Company. They are a black-owned business that makes organic scented candles. All of their candles are made using coconut wax and wooden wicks. Their coconut wax is made from the meat of the coconut and then blended with vegetable soy wax for a creamy candle blend. Some of their awesome scents include, and it is pumpkin spice season, pumpkin patch, eucalyptus spearmint, clean cotton, orange ginger, coffee cake and spice, gardenia, and more. If you go over to refreshcandle.com, you can see all the scents that they have and all the new scents that they have. So before shopping anywhere else for candles, make sure you go over to refreshcandle.com. And to follow them on social media and join the conversation on Facebook and Instagram, you can join them at Refresh Candle Co. Again, that's at Refresh Candle Co. And if you are a candle lover and you want to buy from a black owned business, again, visit refreshcandle.com. And again, it is pumpkin spice season, so make sure y'all pick up that pumpkin patch. Enjoy the show, and we will talk to you guys soon. Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikkel. We are back with a new video. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Of course, I had a great weekend, and I hope that over the weekend, you listen to the Scorpion Show podcast. We have seven episodes available on wherever you like to listen to your favorite podcast. So if you have not downloaded our podcast yet, I don't know what you're waiting on. Click the links inside the more info box and listen to our podcast. And today is actually International Podcast Day. So I hope you guys let, are letting everyone know about our podcast. And I want to give a shout out to the top three countries listening to us. The United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Thank you all for listening to our podcast. If you live in another country, just tell more people to download and to everyone else, keep telling your friends, listen, y'all listen and download. We upload every Friday. If we have a special podcast, we will let you guys know when. Also, um, I, I talked about, you know, our struggles that's, that's been going on recently on YouTube. So thank you to everyone for, you know, hearing us out. And I want to give a shout out to people who became new members or upgraded their membership on our channel so i first want to start out with rodnesha the best robin cantrell live love music and surviving motherhood thank you guys for either becoming new members or upgrading your membership and if you would like to become a member you can become a member on our channel for as low as 199 up to 1999 and your support is definitely appreciated. And we will announce soon when we will be doing a live, I forgot the thing more, a live stream for all of our members on our channel. Um, for who, those who, who would like to watch and talk to us. Because we had some good conversations and it's not all like, oh, you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that. It's just let it loose. So thank you for those who, for those new members. So... Um, it was something else I, I, I had to say, but I can't remember. If you're watching us for the first time, subscribe. To everyone watching, click the like button. To everyone watching, like the, click the like button. And share this video to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, or wherever you choose to share a video. When I say that, like, I'm really serious about that. So we're going to start this show with about a young girl, 12-year-old girl from Virginia, who lied and said that Three boys, three white boys, fell her down on the playground. Let me tell you something. And cut her dreadlocks. This is my first time hearing about her lying. Yes. <laughs> because I read the story and I rolled my eyes. I'll tell you why I rolled my eyes. Want to know why I rolled my eyes? Why? Because I didn't believe it. Mm. That's why I didn't post anything about it. See, if you pay close attention to me, I post things. But when big stories happen and I don't post it, it's usually because I have reservations about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't believe it. Because I'm like, wait. Mm. Why'd she say she lied? Go ahead and tell us why she said she lied. Well, she never said why she lied. But video evidence showed that she was lying because the people who she claimed did it, video proof showed that they were somewhere else 
while this alleged attack happened. So her her grandparents, who are her legal guardians, um, they talked to the school because you know the school was gonna let it be public. Everybody apologized for what happened. And mind you, this is the school that Mike Pence's wife works at on the front as an art teacher. I forgot his so, wife was a teacher. Yeah. Yes. So you know, she apologized. I don't know if there's going to be any action against her, but it's a school where, you know, they pay $11,000 a year. I think she should be expelled to do that. You know, if she, this is a, I don't think she, I being guess, expelled, does that mean I tell you you can't come here no more? Yeah, she can't come here. Okay. No you yeah. can't come here no more. Yeah. You because make, you put, because you put, put all those families at risk. At risk. Yes. Everybody that heard the story, you already yeah. know we are in a sensitive time. Mm -hmm. So we don't have time. For stories like this, yep. and for that to happen, mm -hmm. like, and then you put those boys in jeopardy, right? Um, because Mind people, about that. yeah, and their families, because they're like, well, what are you teaching your children, right? And all this and that, and I mean, we hear hear stories all the time, and it makes us upset, and you know, especially when, oh, you can't wear this hairstyle to go to school, and everybody's behind them, and now we've seen the um, the. The, the referee who made the boy, the wrestler, mm -hmm. cut his dreads. And then you hear about people cutting people dreads. Like, come mm -hmm. on. Like, this is just, it's just not right. I don't think, because the girl's 12, I don't think she understands, like, everything that's going on in this country. So she doesn't understand the impact of what her lie did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we should not be making up lies like that. You mm -hmm. You just shouldn't because we are at a racial sensitive time in this country. And you don't want stories like that to trigger people or do, you know, just, it's just crazy, little girl. And, you know, maybe when she's older, she will understand. But just an apology, I don't think that's just going to do. I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. like what made her come, I now want to know more. What made her come up with a story like this? Right. To, to to just lie on three people innocent. If I was her grandparents, I would take her out of that school. Yeah, she she don't have no. Yeah, if I would I was take her. Out. They, they wouldn't even have to expel her. I would take her out. Yeah. yeah, you can't come back because see if the That's roles were reversed. Too. Yeah, if the roles were reversed, we would want white kids who lied on a black person. We would want them taken out of the school. Right. We would want some type of action, you know, taken against them. Um, yeah, this is not good. That's not good at all. <laughs> it's not good. And yeah. it's not okay to just walk around and lie on people and say that they did something like this when they didn't. Yeah. And thank God that there is proof out there that these boys weren't Yeah, they, there. They could have all been expelled. Yeah, they could have all been expelled. This they could have, be yeah, like, like, come on. Like, it's bad all the way around. But she did, they did say that she did admit to, like, being bullied at certain times. And I could believe that, but... Never be bullied to the point where, where you, you start making a lie. Yeah, don't do that's that. That's when it's time for your grandparents to go to the school and say, "Listen, we have a problem. I pay too much money for her to be, be to come here and to be bullied, and y'all take no action about it." That's what should have been done. So she must have cut her own dress. Yeah, clearly. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe she don't even want the dress. Maybe she probably don't even want dress. They. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> do we have something about that? No, I did not think about that. Because, I mean, certain kids don't, I mean, they some kids don't like certain hairstyles. Right. And it's probably something that she's probably just done with. Like, all right, yeah. I had it, and I'm done with it. I didn't think about that. But still, you don't go lying on people if you no. don't like your hair. You have no. to tell somebody. And that probably was her way of thinking, or right, now that I cut them, then maybe they'll cut, take them, take all, them all out. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea. Like, when, when do you decide? I don't know. Yeah. When do some of y'all decide on... How to keep your children's hairstyles. So if y'all are parents of people, children with locks, let us know. Because I don't know. And I don't, like, I can't even speak up for y'all right now. So y'all just let me know when do you decide this is a hairstyle that you want your child to have. And if your child asks to get rid of them, would you remove the locks? Let us know. So, Uncle Luke is upset with Jay-Z. He made a video about it, posted it to his Instagram. Now, Uncle Luke was someone who was in favor of Jay-Z working with the NFL um, when it came to this agreement with Rock Nation and Jay-Z. And now Uncle Luke is upset because Shakira and Jennifer Lopez, well, excuse me, Jennifer Lopez featuring Shakira are headlining the Super Bowl. 
and he's feeling some kind of way about it because he feels like uh, black music from Miami is not being featured at this halftime show. Now, <laughs> so he told Jay Z, "Trick he Daddy, this. Trina, yes. Flo Rida, <laughs> Super Bowl halftime." <laughs> now listen. <laughs> now that's one name we left out last week when we were discussing all the Latinos. Okay, Pitbull is definitely going to be there. I felt okay? like you said him. We, I ain't even saying because I forgot all about him. But definitely, his name. He's no. It's no doubt about it. He will be there. Okay, but. Can I just say this? Okay, so he's blaming Jay-Z for this. Yes. But I feel like even before we found out Jay-Z was going to be working with them, I yeah. feel like you were talking about Jennifer Lopez possibly headlining the Super yeah. Bowl next year, which means that I'm almost certain that the NFL was talking about this as well before right. Jay-Z jumped on board. Yeah. So why would he assume that automatically Jay-Z is just going to automatically start throwing out black? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And Jennifer Lopez kicked off the NFL season with a new video. Like, she was just right. letting everybody know. She's basically been the face of, yes, yes. of the so. NFL this season. So it's like, why wouldn't she? <laughs> and why is he so upset at Jay-Z because of this? Yeah. I'm sure it's all. Things don't happen overnight, yeah. <laughs> and I and just because Jay Z is now working with the Super Bowl, I certainly did not expect him to automatically get somebody to yeah. be up there this coming Super Bowl. Right. Let me look how you. orange his face is. Yes. Oh my God! And look at his eye. <laughs> I think we were talking <laughs> and saying that you don't want the Super Bowl to be a bathroom break, okay? No. And just because you're in Miami, does or whatever city you go to doesn't mean. <laughs> The African American African community African American community has to be represented there. You know, I just don't believe that. But when you're in a city like Atlanta, yes, I was expecting something like that. In Miami, I think of more, and this is my honest opinion, I think of more of the Latino roots than the black roots. I do know that Trina and Trick Daddy and Flo Rida and a couple other people, a lot of rappers come out of there that I don't even listen to, okay? Singer wise, I don't know no singer that coming from Florida. I only know is the hip hop influence, but maybe because they did the hip hop last year, they didn't want to do it this year, and they wanted to go with more of the Latin roots. And and the NFL can't have everybody black for right. every halftime. Now different races and different right. cultures got to get it. Right. You know, can't be Beyonce all the time like right. y'all wanted to be. Right. But I just don't understand how he thinks that. What is Trina? I it's don't Trina know. Daddy. And we're talking about a hundred million people. We want people to watch, not <laughs> not say what and the and the lyrics that comes out of their mouths. You want that display? I see it sounds like I'm being against this. But because I love my people. Yeah. But and what is Trina? Tr whoever said I want Trick Trina. Daddy in the, <laughs> the <laughs> Super Bowl. <Bowl. laughs> Never. Never. Oh my God! Out of all the names, out of all the fucking, yeah, names. and I didn't even think of Shakira being there. <laughs> right? You know, I'm like, what? I'm not mad. I'm just like, J Lo can do this by herself. But then when we think about all the names that even haven't been announced yet, it could be. I know it's going to be one of the best halftime shows. I already know this. We talking about J Lo. She doesn't play when it comes to choreography. Right. She gets it down. So, she's going to do the damn thing. I didn't like her doing the Motown, but she, it's not mm -hmm. like she did a bad job um, choreography-wise. You know, <laughs> hopefully, I mean, she, she's no Motown. I mean, but she's not a singer. Yeah, yeah she's an entertainer. Yeah, so, she's never been a singer. Oh, my God, it's going to be fireworks. It's going to be everything. <laughs> Trina right? and Trick Daddy can open up for J-Lo at the after party. No, they <laughs> at the do, after party. They can do the ones during the festivity weekend. They can be part of that. But as far as my head time show, I don't want to see them. Is that your <laughs> Can you imagine that? How white people will go crazy. You think they went crazy for Colin Kaepernick kneeling? <laughs> oh my God. And then the fact that Trick Daddy now looks like Esther Rowe. So he's really going to go, wait a minute, did the mom from Good Times become a rapper? You're trying, girl. I mean, I'm <laughs> and you're trying Esther Rowe. Because she, you know, she's played too many good roles to be reduced to Trick Daddy. <laughs> I just feel like, listen, they want to, it's, it's okay to explore the Latin roots during the Super Bowl. We're in Miami, baby. It's going to be fun. Like, you know, maybe black, some, I don't know. How do y'all feel about, this is going to be good. How do y'all feel about 
<laughs> Uncle Luke being upset with Jay Z, not having African American acts. Uncle Luke needs to sit his ass down. Now, Flo Rida makes some good music. Now, I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think he's going to fit into what they're doing. But I mean, he's African American, he's a hip hop artist, and his music. Uncle Transcends Luke. just black people. Let me tell you something. Uncle He's Luke. a crossover artist. Go ahead. Uncle Luke. <laughs> Can you imagine the name of my Uncle Luke up there? Oh. Um, <laughs> they're going to have. First of all, I'm almost certain that the people who are in charge of putting the Super Bowl halftime together probably are not even familiar with half of them. Yeah. Artists. <laughs> so it's like, wait, who, who is Trick there? <laughs> who is Trick? Who else yeah. come out of it? I mean, you got the hardcore man, man. Why would somebody be up there at the Super Bowl singing that? He <laughs> wants the whole love of hip hop cast Miami to be there. Point blank, period. That's what he wants. Bobby lights it off. <laughs> he can say, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Lil Nas X told Ellen the other day he is somewhat dating somebody. So Bobby lights, leave that boy alone, okay? Because yes. mm -hmm. he don't want you. And well, he's a child. Him. Let that child be a child. Well, he's 19. That's a child. He's grown. He's, teenager. Teenager. he's legally grown. Says Mikel. No, I'm just saying. Okay. Because, you know, a 19 year old. I understand. A 19 year old don't go to a uh, kid jail. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> I'm saying. Y'all know how I feel about it. <laughs> Listen, they are a child, <laughs> but in the eyes of the law, he's an adult. Right. That's how you feel about situations like I'm that? going off the eyes of the Lord. I'm, uh, I, first uh, of all, don't try me because I don't date 19 year olds. <laughs> I don't do anything with 19 year olds. I'm just listening. Okay? I'm just saying. I don't I don't mess with people that age, but then but at the, the same time, no, but at the same age. time, I'm not going to cuss somebody out if they do because at the end of the day, the law does say 18 and older is an adult. Yeah, but I do, but I do, but I do look you know, funny on I just like think, that. yeah, and, 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 and that's fine. Know, and I just think yeah. that a lot, because, because we look at 19 year olds as young, because they are young, that we frown our face upon it. But then if we frown our face upon it, then we need to get to lawmakers and say, we need to make the legal age 21. Well, we ain't got to change it. We ain't got to <laughs> well, change it. Well, then we got to stop looking. But I do, I do, but even um, one of my friends, I say, and, and, and then we're going to go right back. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you, let's say, like, you 40 something. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why you right. should be always dating people right. in their young, like, in I'm early 20s. in my 30s. There's nothing I, I have to do like, with a 19 year old. No. I just feel like, you know, you should be with someone more of your age. Right. But I think it's, uh, it's with this person, I don't think they want power, but I think it's more because these people are not young enough to think, like, well, what's going on with this person? And, you know, with someone that's more of your equal, they're going to be like, well, why, why this ain't together? Why this ain't right, together? Right. And stuff like that. So people, Somebody younger, you can, you can make them think and, that you got yeah, your shit together. And you don't. And you don't. Yeah. Right. So I, I guess I get upset with this person. Right. But Do I know this person? I'm not going to say if you do or you don't. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I've, I've always means, had these conversations with this yes, person. I know this person. And I actually yeah. know who you're talking about. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, if you think that. I know a lot of people in their 40s, Miguel. <laughs> Remember, my circle of friends started out young. Mm -mm. But my circle of friends started out young. When I was young, I was 15. So if you was 15, he was in his 20s? Yeah. No, don't hmm <laughs> me. <laughs> don't hmm me, because you're the friends I'm talking about. I didn't say you did anything. I just said, hmm. Yeah. What did, you know, y'all was friends then? I'm not having this conversation. No, I don't mean sexual. I mean but friends. I'm not, yeah, but I say I'm going to talk about this and move back to okay. Uncle Luke. And, yeah. So, Uncle Luke. Do you think Uncle Luke messed with 19 year old girls? I'm sure he has. I'm sure he has. <laughs> we know who has. You know what? Okay. We, don't say his name because I don't even want them to flag this video. You know we can't get paid anyway. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. They flagging that too? Yes. Can, can, I, I, say can I say his no. name? Robert. Yes, That's Robert. Robert. That's literally Robert. just like that. Robert. So, Evelyn Rosada did an interview, and I watched the whole interview for some reason. But I mean, it was it was actually entertaining to hear her talk about some things because it wasn't just all basketball wives related. But Evelyn Rosada is claiming that she's Afro Latina. Now, <laughs> Evelyn, I'm gonna want you to stop playing with me. I have never, in the history of knowing you on Basketball Wives and on Iyanla and on your own show on OWN, have you ever claimed... Yes. Never describe yourself as Afro-Latina.
Now, here's the thing. I do believe most Spanish people do have black roots. Mm -hmm. Most of them. And some of them deny their black roots. And we're not going to go there. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain group mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think this is more Evelyn coming from, because you've, you've been making racist statements about black women or on Basketball Wives. And it's starting to bite you. So now you're starting to claim your African roots. Now that you took a DNA test. You know, it... This just doesn't look good for you. I just don't, I just feel like this came out of nowhere. And you saying that, oh, because one of my cast members said that, oh, now I'm acting like I'm black. I've never felt like you've acted like you're black. I think that, you know, this is th these are your roots because these are where you're from. This is how you were brought up. This is the, the, the culture that you was a part of. And you grew up with black and Latino people. But I and and I don't think anybody in out of all the basketball wise reviews I've done or watched, no one has ever said you're trying to act like you're black. So now you gotta, you know, claim your African side. This is more oh my god, they catching me. Who is calling me? Look at this. What? I don't know. I got I got an unknown call, then I got a voicemail. I don't know. Maybe it's the clinic. Yeah, the clinic for what? You better stop playing with me. <laughs> you better make sure you at the clinic. Because I know my stuff. Because sometimes they call a number. No, but not, no, <laughs> not from that number. And my doctor has never brought me anonymously. <laughs> Don't play with me. <laughs> Oh, Evelyn. <laughs> yeah, Evelyn. And I stopped watching Basketball Wives. I like, and you know what? I'm a, I like Evelyn. I really yeah. do. You like her, what side? Her African or her Latin side? I like her, her style. <laughs> <laughs> I like her style. Yes, because she's, she's very good. Yeah, she can put some all of that. She yes. can. And she's a beautiful woman. Yes. She's a beautiful woman. Um, her antics at times can be a little, you know, like okay. I didn't like the fact that she was like that with CC, but then when OG came, she was all, you know, Call on the other side. Of, she was on the other side of the room talking shit, but she wanted to jump all in CC face. Yeah, you know, pick and choose your battles. Yeah, you pick and choose your battles, but yeah, I, yeah, I don't pick. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't watch the interview because I just I'm like I'm like this. Yeah, I don't give two shits about what you do off of basketball wise. I really don't. I just want to see the new. I just want to see the new episode of who you gonna be arguing with this time. Mm -hmm. Cause other than that, I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. You know, I don't give a fuck about that. She, I don't know. I just, I just don't like that she's now trying to claim this side. Right. I mean, but it ain't nothing wrong. With but see, y'all know I, I got Asian roots. I have Indian, Native American roots, and I have you know a little bit of white. But I don't claim those things to say. Well, I'm just, right. I'm just mixed all together. Right. Like no. Right. I am African American. You know what I'm saying? Stop trying. Stop playing. I don't, you know, that's why I'm like Elizabeth Warren, because she tried that stuff. Claiming to be Native mm -hmm. American and a zero, zero, zero point of <laughs> Native American. She tried it. She really did. She really did. That's, that's why I don't like her. That's their, uh... I've got more Native, Native American uh, roots than her. I'm 2%. That's their favorite uh, candidate for... For office right now, people, yeah. you know, for, listen, listen, y'all have your fave person. I have my, I know who I'm back in, in 2020, so, yeah. you know, it's just that. Let's let the games begin. Next topic. Stacy Dash. Stacy fucking Dashes. <laughs> With an S. Stacy Dash was arrested for beating up her husband in California. Black on white crime. Yes. She <laughs> And she's been held on bond for five hundred dollars. She'll be out soon, but I just wanted to let y'all know that Stacey Dash got arrested for domestic violence. Does anyone care? No. no. Should they keep her in jail? Yes. yes. <laughs> All the way in jail. <laughs> and let's see if Donald Trump gets her ass. Yeah. Jail. Maybe he can pardon her. Maybe he can pardon her. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I'm sure he will. Yes. And I'm sure if he does <laughs> win, <laughs> she'll be in his administration. Oh my God. I hope not. She'll be in the Kelly Ann Conway. <laughs> Kelly Ann. Con don't even break her up, because when she said, <laughs> when she said about Nancy Pelosi, when, that made me upset. What did she say? Talking about mean? his men telling her to impeach the president, oh, yeah, and that's true. why she went along with it. Like, She's stop stupid. playing. First of all, 
Donald Trump and the Trump administration should actually be thanking Nancy Pelosi that she didn't go along with it months ago when right. Democrats, actually a few years back, <laughs> for the past two years, when Democrats like Maxine well, Waters and others. But they do it because they didn't yeah, have but, power. But I'm just oh, saying, yeah, right they, the you know, they were trying to go for this impeachment thing. Even when they did get power, Nancy Pelosi was like, no, 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 this right. is not the right move. Yeah, yeah. So let's not go, oh, it's meant in her ear. No, it's not. Because Nancy Pelosi for months has been trying to keep this whole yeah, impeachment thing. they've been thing. all getting on my nerves with yes. this impeachment. Because like, if you want to do it or you do it, don't, you don't. Just don't do it. I but feel like we should know if they're going to impeach him yeah. or not before the end of this. I mean, we young people in, that, in Congress. I mean, I don't like And people, people of color. Yeah. <laughs> we need more. Just more. We need more. More people of color. And more more people, people that have bold, to make yes. bold choices. Yes. And not being afraid to say what's on their mind and say what, how they feel. Mm -hmm. Because the Republicans, they damn sure tell you and they give you their ass to kiss all the time. Right. All right, let's move on. K Candy and her surrogate. I mean, not, I didn't mean to say it like that. Candy, candy Burris. Yes, Candy's and, and Candy and Ty, they are pregnant via a surrogate. I want to say congratulations to Candy. I think there's going to be more great storylines on the Housewives if they're documenting it on the show. And, Which I'm sure they are. Yeah, and I was saying, like, you know, the decision it definitely wasn't easy, but... You know, black people really don't talk about sur surrogacy, mm -hmm. and you rare. I rarely hear it now. I've never heard it from anybody I know, but only through famous black people. Never heard it from a regular. Smack know, yeah, about thinking about surrogacy or freezing their eggs and IVF treatments and stuff like that. I think that this is going to be more of an eye opener. So I hope that they're they share that on the show, and Candy has also joined the cast of The Shy for season three. Now, listen, before y'all roll your eyes and everything, I did all the fact checking because, you know, we got Lena Waithe on the phone and we talked to her. So shout out to Lena Waithe because I was a little bit concerned because I was like, hold up now, y'all got Lil Rel joining the show. Y'all got Luke James joining the show. You got Lala joining the show. Then a week later, I'm hearing Candy's joining the show. And then two weeks from now, Donald Trump will be on the show. So, <laughs> his characters are getting killed off. Okay. I'm like, Lena, like, what is the tea? And I mean, she gave us a tea answer. And she put my mind at ease. Because, you know, I was just really like, I don't want this show to get rid of my favorite people mm -hmm. that I liked and I cared about. But it's definitely season three is definitely going to be like. And let me tell you something. The show. Like, like Kevin said, Kevin was really, you know, nervous about Candy being on the show. And so we got Lena on the phone and Lena did some explaining and then some. Mm -hmm. Because she ran down. First of all, I don't know if I told her this on the phone, but I felt like I watched season three with the conversation we yeah, had. Because yeah, yeah. we had like a half an hour conversation with her. And I mean. She was running down the season, and it's going to be really good. Um, and it's going to be interesting, too. And I think everybody should stay tuned to The Shy Season 3, because it's going to be interesting. You're going to be like, wait, y'all doing what this season? <laughs> Whoa! I didn't see that coming. A lot of questions are going to be thrown out there, too. Yes. With <laughs> I, now you know, so don't say nothing else. But, but I it's going wait. to be really, really good. <laughs> okay? So I felt like as she was explaining everything to us, I'm just sitting here and I'm visualizing everything. And I'm like, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, stay tuned for season three of The Shy. This is mm -hmm. going to be good. If you have not caught up on season two, you should have. But if you haven't, yeah. make sure you do. It is right on Showtime. So go ahead and you can either watch it on the app like everybody else or mm -hmm. watch it on TV if you have it. Well, we have all, we have all the, um, the stuff. And I got to catch the guy fought the arm because I had just tweeted about it. I DVR'd it. I was up last night watching Power. Um, th this week's and last week's episode. And I'm just like, oh my God. First of all, I feel like they're killing everybody. <laughs> they're killing all everybody. Nobody got killed this episode, do they? No. No, but I'm just, I feel like like the main it's people that's, it's yes. Coming, right. Like everybody is dying. Well, you know, I said the three that I feel like someone, someone out of this three is going to get killed. Tommy, Ghost, or Tyreek. Mm -hmm. I want it to be Tyreek because I'm tired of him. They don't beat him, so kill him. <laughs> yeah, but I, I was so happy to see Tommy and Ghost working together. 
like they saying like okay this is you know time out or whatever but seeing them work together and actually like get things done it was fun seeing them trying to like get the money together all of that was fun for me like just watching it because it felt like old times from power like I didn't even think like about all the stuff that they've been trying to kill each other or mm -hmm. Angela or any of that like it was just like I'm getting chills like I was just so happy to see that but I know eventually one of them are going to kill each other or like someone was saying like they think they both want to die like they're going to end up shooting each other I don't want to see but, both die no I don't I don't want to see I don't want to see them die who would you rather go to Tommy Yeah, I just don't know who's gonna die. You know, I just or I, Ghost Tommy or Tyreek. Mm -mm, that's not even head. Like, first of all, you know one thing I don't like about Tyreek? His acting is terrible. Like I I just be like <laughs> He he acts like he's not moving. Yeah, his oh, he's, yeah like, he's and it's so like manipulative. Like, like I'm Uncle like Tommy. I called him. I Tommy. knew it. I knew it shouldn't have did. Tommy, like, come on. on. <laughs> so who would you rather? None of them. Like, come on. You know what I watched what? this weekend? What? I watched Nobody's Fool by Tyler Perry and with Tiffany Haddish mm -hmm. and Omari Hardwick mm -hmm. and, um, oh, her name Whoopi is Gold. there. No. But she was in that, right? Yeah, Whoopi mm -hmm. was. Tika something. Tika something, yeah. Mm -hmm. That movie, first of all, when they, when they showed you the previews, they made it look like, oh, it's just Tiffany Haddish movie. But that movie and the storyline was actually. Even though the reviews are trash, that movie was good. Because it wasn't just about Tiffany Haddish. That shit had, it was like, I, without ruining it, she meets someone. She didn't meet them, but she's having a relationship with someone who she met through like a dating app. Mm -hmm. They got catfished involved. Mm -hmm. Like, it was all kinds of stuff going on. And then you meet somebody who had a terrible past mm -hmm. and you like, he ain't really my type, but he fuck me real good. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, all of that. And Tyler Perry, where all these curse words come from? That's where you start putting all that in your movie? Somebody's not your type, but... But I'm, I don't want, I feel like I'm about to tell you the whole thing. Don't but it was good. You just say it was good. Nobody's fool. And I think you gotta have epics or one of those stars channels to watch it. But definitely, it was a great film. And I, I, I slept on that. Because I was like, here we go, Tiffany Haddish again mm -hmm. in the same role. I mean, which is crazy and stuff. But it was not just about Tiffany. Mm -hmm. It was about Tika and Omari. And Whoopi had some funny parts. Mm -hmm. She was good. I, and, I, and it's good to see Whoopi working. Right. But back to The Shy. I don't know when it's coming back on. They're filming. And I just can't wait to see season three. It's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be good. It's I, I know it's gonna be good, especially some of the storylines that Lena told us. Cause I don't. I'm glad she didn't say too much. Cause I do. We do want to talk about the show when it comes out. But <laughs> the storylines. <clears throat> that was nasty. The, excuse me. The storylines that she was telling us. Like I'm like okay, all right. Cause I'm just like now. Now y'all put. Come on now, Candy. Is there anybody on the shy that you would rather? Besides your boo, <laughs> uh, and I'm talking about <laughs> you know who I would, I would, and I'm not gonna say this out loud. First of all, don't you ever <laughs> say besides your boo, don't you ever, <laughs> bitch. Oh my don't god, I'm you, I'm, don't say it out loud. All right. <laughs> my pen acting like it don't want to work. Okay, I find something really like um, who's that? Oh my God! How you gonna know? <laughs> Are you smelling it right? <laughs> yes. The older one. <laughs> this is stupid. Wait, wait, wait. The, the, no, you're okay, trying to act wait, stupid. No, I'm not. I swear I'm not. No, listen. No. Which one? Forget it. No. Now I'm gonna say <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because I gotta see now. But don't say it out loud. <laughs> Wait. Did you read what I said? No! Oh. Ah! <laughs> That's season one. Oh. <laughs> no! Well, I typed the cast and it didn't come. No. Wait, hold on. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> no. No. Who? Go back. I already <laughs> told you who, but not that one. That's not who. Um, Come here. Oh my god, you're a mess. <laughs> this one. Oh! Don't say no, nothing. No, no, right. no, no, no. Yes. That's, that's the one. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> well, I always wanted to. Hopefully. We get <laughs> Bitch, what? <laughs> I gotta turn the camera. Wow. <laughs> it's a okay. <laughs> a ring around. <laughs> it's not even attractive. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so congratulations to Kim. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right, this ain't really news, but if you got Alexa, if you like, like, because when I go to my friend's house, I always when I go to his house, I'm like, Alexa, turn on this and turn on that, play this song and play that yeah, song. Yeah, I'm going to my house and Alexa. Turn on the last porn this person was watching. Can you imagine? <laughs> Got it. So, man fucks horse. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you got it. You know, I want this video. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Samuel oh, L. Jackson oh. is going to be the new Alexa. I don't know how they did it, how they came up, but I, I think that requires hours and hours. Oh my God, can you imagine? I thought about But that I don't think that would, and he's going to be cursing. It's, it's your option to have <laughs> him <laughs> curse. I think that's like one of the best things they to make it more enter and I would want that for Christmas. I don't have nothing Alexa related in my home. But yes, you I do. Would, <laughs> got Fifteen other fucking people in here. I would love <laughs> all to have them. something like that. Just to cause I like Sidney L. Jackson was so animated when he talked and everything and he always used the F word. So I would just love to have something like that. So Shout out to Samuel L. Jackson and Alexa, well, um, Amazon for getting this to become a thing. Um, T.I. and Pastor Jamal. Okay. So this was like a real big thing last week, but we didn't get a chance to get around to it. So this is when Kanye and stuff was at the church. New Birth. Yeah, at New Birth um, Church. Now, we all know Bishop Eddie Long used to be the pastor there. Mm -hmm. Then someone else became the pastor. Um, Bishop Eddie Long passed away, and now Jamal Bryant is the new pastor mm -hmm. of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. Um, so Kanye had this big service there, and T.I. and his wife were there. Killer, I'm, I'm not sure if it was Killer Mike, but it was a couple of people that got money mm -hmm. that were there. That were there. So T.I. Made it, made it clear that he came in after the offering was made to the church. Mm -hmm. Now he was claiming that yeah I did I, I spent forty five minutes, um, I took away my forty five minutes away from my fellowship at the Magic City to uh, go home and get ready for for the service, and now he's saying that he felt like he was um, what's the word I'm looking for when they like they take your money or whatever. He felt like he was I can't find the right word. He said let me find the right word. Because I want to say shake down, but I don't feel like that was the word. Exploited. Exploited. He felt like he was exploited because they, I guess they had more than one offering, offering mm -hmm. towards the church. And and he was just like, come on, like, what's going on, such, 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 such. And Pastor Jim, and, and, and T.I. was on a podcast with Killer Mike. And T.I. was just venting his frustrations. But if you look at a picture at the church, mm -hmm. this is T.I., with a balled up face mm -hmm. at church, and there's uh, two chains. It could have been now that moment, because you know how I feel about pictures. Pictures are a second in a whole right. dynamic of things. You see, um, look, 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 look. We must discuss what caused this look on my face in Sunday service. I, I think that he probably, that was just a picture that he grabbed and said that's what caused his face. Because yeah. usually somebody with offerings like that, that's usually not their face. It's usually like, Wait, don't know well, what probably was being said in the church. Now, I've been right. to services where they've done two or three um, offerings because they're trying to get mm -hmm. the money that they need mm -hmm. for whatever church. But then also, too, because at my church, there's a mission offering. And the mission offering, um, because that's the first one that goes around. We have two offerings, by the way. Um, we have the mission offering, and the mission offering is money that is collected for whatever mission 
project that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I know last year we collected money for our mission offering to send to St. Jude's, the Children's Hospital. Yes. So we collected money for that. So each year we collect money. The year before, I can't, I'm not for sure what we're doing this year, but the year before that, our mission offering was taken up and we used that money to give to two of our members who were on their way to college okay. all year. So different churches have different things for their mission offering. Like I said, last year our mission offers was sent to St. Jude's. I can't think of what it is for this year, so when I find out, I'll let you know. Um, and then you have your regular offering where you give your tithes or your whatever your case may be. And of course, anybody who knows your tithes or the, 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 the money that goes to the, church. that goes to the church. Um, you would think <laughs> that with a big church like that, you would only need one offering because that's a huge church. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's a mega church. Yes. And you know, I've never been to a big church where they've done multiple offerings. I've only, and, and like I said, my church and then the church that I visit quite often, Harold Davis, they do two as well. They do the mission offering and then they do their tithes and offer. So I'm not 100% sure why this church, and I can see maybe that's why he felt that way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so tell us what. Pastor Brian said, because I'm so, interested. Pastor Brian, story. Pastor Brian woke up. He said he woke up to his news. Yeah. He said, uh, I was awakened to your clip this morning and felt compelled to lend context. <laughs> <laughs> As black men, I hope we could wait. That's yeah. So he says, This is way too long, so I'm gonna try to shorten this up. Wait, can I read it? Sure. You want me to uh, right there, because start was, from where? Where do you want me to start from? He said, start right here. To have both of you in our church was meaningful for many people. Okay, so this is Pastor Jamal talking to T.I. and Killer Mike. Yes. He says, to have both of you in church was meaningful for many reasons. This is the largest demographic of blacks who don't buy into organized religion in our history in large measure because of reasons you have illuminated. To not give, to not give redress would be an assault to the body of Christ when I believe I am an ambassador as the two of you are for your field. I don't want Sunday to be used as further ammunition as to why people don't go to church without them knowing at this same church we gave 5,000 pairs of new back to school shoes to kids of Atlanta. Or that we superheaded 9 million spearheaded. Oh, I'm sorry, spearheaded 9 million campaign 9 million campaign to support Bennett College or that we bailed out nonviolent offenders or that we partnered with Delta to send four cargo to Bahamas, I guess four, four cargo planes to Bahamas for hurricane release, or that we've partnered with Ham what is that? Hampton, Hampton University, University to place 95 displaced students, or that we fed the four low workers for two weeks while the government was shut down, or that we went into housing projects where where you solicited for a donation. To feed kids of DeKalb County during spring break. Oh, see, I'm... Yeah, this is computer act is stupid. But yeah, just this don't. Is, it's jumping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to feed kids of DeKalb County during spring break. But none. <laughs> I think you're touching the mouse. That's I didn't touch the, anything. Your arm touched it. All right, I'm not touching. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. For none of these projects were you solicited for a donation. The reality is when I came to Newburgh nine months ago, I was met with a $30 million debt that must be paid so that we can be free to do real community development like affordable housing, entrepreneur, work, space, and medical clinics. I've been teaching on self-help, which are values you both promote. Bishop... Hillary was invited months ago with no knowledge Kanye West was coming or either of you. So there was no money grab intention but part of it but part of an internal strategy strategy to mobilize our church community to move towards economic independence. As black men, I hope we can come together expeditiously to find common ground to build. I want to invite both of you to come and give church another chance. I promise you I'm more interested in your life than your life savings. So I guess that, so who wrote this? Oh, so T.I., yeah, this is his response? Yeah. Nothing but love and respect for you. Uh, I'm still shoulder to shoulder in the struggle with you. Um, part of my progress, you know God still has me under construction. Our views may differ on some matters, but we are both aligned and move in unison on behalf of our people. So yes, of course, we can come together. I never consider us separate, separated or torn apart. Um, I'm always willing to sit in fellowship with you or anybody else who institutes change and make significant steps towards progress. See, I'm not touching it. Towards progress. Towards progress for our people. 
don't know how to move your mouse, um, hand with the mouse. See, it's the mouse. Yeah. That's what I said. It wasn't me. Don't know how soon I'll be in your neck of the woods again, though, so maybe another venue would better enable us to meet expeditiously. I'm here when you need me, just as I always have been. Take it light and continue. No, you are T.I., and you have the means to be in his venue. You don't want to be in his venue because you don't want to be in his space, and you don't want to feel humiliated. So you would rather meet somewhere common on common ground where y'all can meet together where neither... I get it. I think that T.I. should have had a conversation with Pastor Bryant before posting that. And I'm going to tell you why. I had somebody come to my church one Sunday and we have this box that we put up during offering and it's called the Pastor's Care Box. And what it is is members can put whatever they want inside the box. This box is for our pastor, so when he goes on um, to co different conferences, like conventions and things like that that preachers have, he will actually have traveling money, mm -hmm. things like that, hotel stay, that money for whatever the case may be. Of course, naturally, if you're a visitor, you're not sure what that box is. So I remember I was explaining something to my friend, but then I thought to myself, if my friend is confused, there's other people who are confused as well. So I remember I had a private conversation with my pastor about it, and he said it's a very valid point. So I remember the following Sunday, he got up and he spoke about the box. Not for members, because of course we already knew what it was for, but for anybody who was visiting who may not be aware. And I remember after that, for a few Sundays after that, he made it a point to get up there and make sure that if there was anybody a visitor, they understood what their box was for, and they also understood that is an option if you want to put something in there. You don't have to put anything in there, but that's just an option, of, and this is the reason why we do that. I think that if T.I. would have went to Pastor Bryant rather than going on social media and doing that, he would have gotten an understanding of what it was that Pastor Bryant and what it is that New Birth does. With that being said, I think that Pastor Bryant handled that well in his response and, and mapping out everything that New Birth does. Because a lot of people <laughs> tend to think that when you go to church and they're asking for money, people have this preconceived notion, because whatever it is, oh, all the money's just going to the pastor. And I keep having to remind people that that is not the case in many instances. Mm -hmm. You do have some shady preachers out there. you got some crooked pastors you have. But I, I try to tell people, do not paint all preachers and churches in that box, because it's not true. A lot of people fail to realize that pastors are employees of a church, which means that churches hire pastors and they also have the right to fire a pastor. And so therefore, when you hire and fire a pastor, that means that you have to pay them a salary because they are an employee of the church. So yes, there are pastors who do get paid because they are an employee. Tides do not go to a pastor. Tides are for what it is for. The storehouse, meaning the church, it is for that money is collected so that I'm sorry, so that the lights can stay on, so that the gas can stay on, so that the water can continue to run, so that people every Sunday will have a place to come and worship. If you don't pay your tithes, then the lights won't stay on in these churches, the gas won't stay on, the water won't stay on. And I think people think that, oh, well. You, you mean to tell me that y'all don't have no money to keep this all on? Well, how are we going to have money to keep it all on if ain't nobody paying their tithes? Mm -hmm. And not to mention that the government and <laughs> they don't give religious organizations no type of stipend or no type of grants to help them pay bills. No, they don't give them any of that. Are churches tax exempt? Yes, they are. But you don't have, churches still need money to keep everything on. <laughs> That's and, and, and people fail to realize that. And I don't know if it's because they're listening to people, listening to somebody who may have been seen or, or heard something in the church and they're so upset. So now they go out there and say this, that, and the third. But it's like people have to stop saying that when you give money to a church that somehow it's going to the pastor. Like Pastor Brian said, we do X, Y, and Z. 
that we don't really talk about, but this is what we do. And not to mention, we're doing all this, collecting money for this, paying for this, on top of the fact that we have a $3 million debt. 30. $30 million debt. Right. Instead of focusing on that $30 million debt, they're trying to help people in need. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Just like my church. My church, and you've been to my church plenty of time. We don't have the membership. People try to figure out all the time, well, how the fuck are y'all still operating? Y'all ain't even got nobody to in there. But we still, like I just said, we take up offerings for people who are in college. We take up offerings for, say, St. Jude's is getting millions upon millions of dollars from people all around this world. But yet we yeah, said... them children need it, too. Yeah, but yet we... You know what I mean? So it's like, I think that T.I. should have gone about this a different way. I'm not, I've never really gotten to Pastor Jamal. I've never, never really did. I know he and Tweet were together at one point. I'm not for sure if they still are. But I just feel like, T.I., you were better off saying something to Pastor Bryant in private so that Pastor Bryant could have laid out what it is that the church does and why it is that the church mm -hmm. takes mm -hmm. up this money. You know what I mean? Rather than posting that and saying, oh, I'll explain later why I made this face. So now you just made an ass of yourself because Pastor Bryant really just handed you your face back to you. And I'm glad he did it in that way. And I'm glad Pastor Bryant wasn't rude about it. He laid everything out and said, this is what we do on top of the fact that we have a $30 million debt that we still haven't covered yet, but we're still have helping other people in need. And you know what? You know what's funny? Rappers don't have no problems with spending money in no. the strip club, throwing no. that money. No. But when it comes to the church, but then when it comes to the problem. church, then it's a big problem. It's a big problem. Oh, I'm trying to figure out why they got all these offering back. You ain't have no problem spending it on that. On you ain't got no problem. And let me tell you something. You make your money, so you spend it the way you want to spend it. But you have no problem buying all these different uh, cars for your wife for her birthday. You don't have no problem buying these big mansions. You don't have no problem spending your vacation with your family on these luxury. Yachts for weeks at a time. You have no problems on in strip clubs, but yet when the church asks for money, then all of a sudden, oh, now my face is balled up because mm, I'm trying to figure out. It's just the the hypocrisy of it. And to be quite honest with you, Pastor Jamal, you actually don't even have to meet with them because you already laid out what it is that y'all do. Let him take that and do what it is that he needs to do with it. But for his response to be, oh, I don't know when's the next time I'm going to be in your neck of the woods. Ti, you live in Georgia. The church is in Georgia. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean you don't know when the next time you it's like it's not like the church is all in Alaska somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's in Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the neck of the what are you talking about? You're TI. You got the means to get on a helicopter, get in your car for a few hours drive. Like, are you serious? No, you didn't expect him to respond the way he did and lay out what it is that the church does. You didn't expect that. Right. Shame on you, TI. Shame on you. And I'm glad that the Killer Mike and the rest of them ain't go get involved in this. I'm hopefully they all kept quiet. Too. Yeah, but I didn't listen to the podcast. With, but I mean, he did sit there with Killer Mike. I only seen the clip. Well, I hope Killer Mike didn't entertain that. Yeah, well, but then again, you never know, right? Yeah. You never know, right? No, you sometimes right. I like Killer Mike, and sometimes I don't. You know, I don't know. Now, there's this new show. This is the last topic. There's this new show on Epics called Godfather of Harlem, and it stars. Forrest Whitaker. Is it Forrest Whitaker? Because mm -hmm. I almost say Robert Whitaker, but that's a USC fighter. Forrest Whitaker, and this is on the days, this is based on a true story. Because um, somebody was like, yeah, I've, I've heard about him, mm -hmm. the guy. Bumpy Johnson. Bumpy Johnson. And you remember um, Hoodlum in the mid 90s with Lawrence Fishburne and Cicely Tyson. Um, Lawrence Fishburne, I think if I'm not mistaken, he played Bumpy Johnson, and Cicely Tyson played uh, Madam Stephanie Sinclair, who I'm shocked and surprised that they haven't made a movie about her yet, because she was really big in the 1930s. Um, she was one of the first people, you know, back in New York who kind of came up or started with the whole numbers thing, which we all know now today is a lot of it. She was really big with that, and she made a lot of money off of that. Um, if you haven't seen Hoodlum, i got to make sure that's the right name on it. I think it is. If you haven't seen Hoodlum, it's a classic movie. Um, like I said, it's Lawrence Fishburne, uh, Cicely Tyson. It came out in 1997. Yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yep, and Fishburne, he plays Bumpy Johnson. It's a really good movie, gangster movie. Really good movie, so check it out. Um, but, uh, yeah, this story with Bumpy Johnson is really interesting because Bumpy Johnson... Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm taking over. Go ahead. 
No, it's from here. Yeah, sorry. I, didn't, I remember I didn't watch it yet. Oh, sorry. I think we already, but I didn't watch okay. it. Okay, so J Bumpy Johnson was big um, back in the day. He was big in, like, a, he was like a drug guy. He was into drugs. Not taking drugs, but, you know, distributing drugs, whatever the case may be. Um, he got arrested. He did some time in jail for some years, maybe about 10, 11 years he was in jail. Um, when he got out of jail in the early 60s, things had changed, of course. So, you know, he tried to, you know, come and reclaim his thing, whatever case may be, in Harlem, his territory, whatever case may be. Now, by this time, a lot of people had taken over, and it was this whole big thing. But um, it's, it's a really, his, Bumpy Johnson's story is a really good story because he's one of those people that you rarely hear of. Yeah, I've never heard of him. You rarely hear of him, but he actually was pretty big back in the day. Um, right alongside Frank Lucas. Now you remember Frank Lucas, Denzel Washington played him in American Gangster. Did you see that movie? No. That's a good movie too. <laughs> see, I've seen bits and pieces of it. That's the movie that uh, Ruby D was nominated for an Oscar for and she was only <laughs> in the movie for like 15 to 10, 15 minutes. minutes okay? <laughs> but they thought enough of her to give her an Oscar nomination. Denzel Washington was nominated too and I was upset that he lost that year because he did a really good job in American Gangster. Um, yeah, so check it out. Check it out. It's good. I saw the first episode today. I gotta watch the second episode. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's not bad. It's interesting. I, I just can't wait to see more episodes. Did it start out slow? It didn't start out slow. It didn't start out slow. You know what I think it is? I think maybe... I've never been a fan of Forrest Whitaker. What? Yeah, so it's just like... I could see another actor playing that role. Really? Yeah. I hope we say his that is, his name is Forrest Whitaker, right? Yes, Forrest Whitaker. Okay. F O R E S T Whitaker. <laughs> it feel like it's it feel like it's another name that I don't know why. No, it's Forrest Whitaker. Okay. Um. Yeah. The casting, I mean, and 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 the casting, I guess, because Bumpy Johnson, when he got out of jail, he was like in his late fifties. So Forrest, so Forrest Whitaker's casting wise, I guess. Um, there's also the actor, I can't pronounce his name, but he plays, um, um, uh, Adam, I think it's Adam Clayton Powell. He plays the preacher in the film, and in real life he was a congressman and a preacher. Um, I can't pronounce the name of this church in New York City, but he was the pastor of this church for years and years and years. And then there was a scandal with him and one of his wives back in the day, um, him and his wife, he, while he was in Congress, he had his wife on the payroll, and she had, they had separated, and she had moved back to, I think it was like Puerto Rico somewhere, and she was still on the payroll making like $20,000, and then eventually they caught on to the fact that she was on the payroll. It was a big, and this is on this, uh, on this show? No, I'm talking about the guy in real life. <laughs> <laughs> See, because some of these characters, because you know I'm into history, some of these characters on the show I actually know about, because mm -hmm. I've learned about them in the past. Um, so yeah. Oh, yeah. What's his name? I'm, I hope I'm saying his name right. Yeah, I don't know um, who I'm talking about, but Godfather, look, listen, I seen the commercial. And Adam Clayton, like, I'm sorry, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. He was a congressman from New York. He was a congressman from New York he when he was, black? Yeah, he was black. Nice looking, um, I'm going to show you. Uh, and the guy who plays him in the movie, it's does a good job. He looked like Duke Ellington. Yeah. And Walt Disney. Yeah, like Walt right. Disney yeah. Um, but I'm going to show you. Mix, I'm, yeah. I'm going to show you the actor who plays him because I can't think of his name. Him. He plays him in the movie. And they cast him very well. Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. yeah. And he, John he, this is him on, on yeah. set. He looks, you know, they cast it really well. Yes, um, they did. That was a yeah, good that cast. was a good cast. It really was. And when he walked on screen, I knew exactly who he was supposed to be. I said, oh my God, they got him. And then when he said his name, I was like, yep, that's him. But the actual man, he was a congressman from New York, but he, um, he was a pastor first. His father was a pastor, and then his father stepped down, and he became the pastor of this church. And while he was the pastor of this church, which was a really big church back in the day, and it's ironic that we're talking about Jamal Bryant, because this guy was a pastor of a church that had like over 10,000 people. Um, he then eventually, of course, used his pulpit to start his political career. And then he became um, a congressman, and he stayed a congressman 
until he was a congressman for maybe about 20 years until around this time when the scandal happened and then he was exed out and then he stopped um, he stepped down from being the pastor of this church and then he moved out of the country wherever the case may be mm -hmm. and then when he died because he died like a few years later and then when he died, they brought his body back to the church where he was. I'm telling y'all too much. <laughs> but I'm sure that's not going to be all on the show. No, it's not on the show, but that's what I'm saying. I'm telling y'all so much. Y'all probably like, wait, I didn't see that on the show. But this Sorry. show is about Bumpy Johnson. Yeah. It's the it's Godfather a, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's about Bumpy Johnson. Yes. Okay. And all the shady characters in between. Yes. Malcolm okay. X is in the show, too, because apparently Bumpy Johnson and Malcolm X had crossed paths years before, before Malcolm X even became Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. And so now, years later, now that Bumpy's out of jail, he runs into Malcolm X again, and now Malcolm X is Malcolm X, and he's like, well, you know, nigga, I remember you when you were still eating pork and all that stuff. Uh, now you Malcolm X. And then Malcolm tells him, and, well, this is in the show, Malcolm tells him that because of Bumpy, you know, he, he started staring towards Islam, you know, whatever the case may be, so. Now, I don't know if that's true or if it's just dramatized for the show, but, yeah. The guy who plays Malcolm X, too, is cast. Yeah, he looks like, because uh, when I seen my to this Malcolm X. Yeah. But we're going we're gonna to be watching Godfather of Harlem. It comes on Epics. I know everybody doesn't have Epics. You can get, if you have um, Amazon, you can get Epics for five ninety nine. dollars 99 I know this week they're doing a free view for those with cable. And, or you could probably just sign up through the app for five ninety nine. But definitely... The Godfather of Harlem is a show that I think everyone should watch. And I haven't watched the first episode yet, but I'm going to watch it tonight while I'm editing this video. I'm going to be watching the first episode. And Mikhail tells me that there's a second episode already available. Mm -hmm. So you can watch two episodes in one night. I've caught up on Power. I've caught up, but I'm not caught up on um, Godfather yet. But I am caught up on Greenleaf. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm ready to beat Charity's ass and yeah. I'm ready to beat up Carissa's ass. Like, why are y'all working against this family? Like, mm -hmm. this is your own family and you're working against them. You know, they killed Charity off and Tommy came from power and <laughs> came to Green Deep and killed her. I would be so old no school. Huh? I said no fucks given. No. Like her no character is given. annoying now. It's like I used to really like Cherry. No, never now, liked her. Never liked her. I never liked her because I, I don't know if it's the character or the actress. <laughs> Woo! I don't like it. When she did that phone call, like, why you ain't call me? Why yes, Team Big, yeah. Why would you do that? Because she knew what she was doing. Yeah. The same reason why she's being a spy for this man for her family. I ain't gonna get nothing. That's what you call. That's who Ti the church Ti needs to be. Yeah, because that church is a business. <laughs> yeah, that's how support is a business. That's not even like my church. They love the my Lord. church. Yeah. My church. That's not your church. Yeah. That's why you're no longer the pastor there. <laughs> you didn't they, found this church. Like they're doing too much. At least I don't think they found. Did they? Found, no, I don't. Did the characters found that church. Which interesting. You know that church is filmed. That the the scenes at Greenleaf is filmed at um. Eddie, uh, oh boy, I'm about to show you his name right now. Um, Eddie Dewey. Is it in, oh, is oh, it yeah. in Atlanta or North e. Dewey, Carolina? Uh, e. Dewey Smith. Yeah, it's filmed at his church. Oh, really? This is his church. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And this is where it's filmed at. Where's this um, church at? In Atlanta? Yeah, I think it is. What is it called? What the hell is the name of this church? Because he posts it every Sunday. House of something. Oh wait, the House of Hope in Atlanta. Yes. Well, that's the name of the show on. Um, no, it's called I mean, um, Harmony Hope. Hope. Oh, Harmony, Harmony Hope. Hope. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. They don't work the name into there. Yeah. See. This is. This is and it. where? What city is this in? Atlanta. Oh wow. Yeah. This is where they film it at. At this church every Sunday. I mean, that is Sunday. like a. That's a big. I don't think I could be a part of a congregation that big because I wanna. There's no way the pastor can know everybody in that church. Yeah. That's true. That's a why I don't like. But you know churches. what? I I think that people who go to these type of churches, they don't. And, and I get what you're saying. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I get what you're saying. I'm just maybe thinking that maybe people who go to these type of churches, they don't go really to know the pastor. They just go to hear the word. Cause you got some people who go to church, they go hear the word and they leave. Mm -hmm. They don't participate in nothing at church. They don't. They right. pay their tithes and then they go home. They could care less about anything else. Right. <laughs> That's just how some people are. You know. I, say, I go to this church. It's, I hope it's not the same. I, I like to go to a church where there's intimate, like you know, it's 
where you know right. Yeah. <laughs> not, you don't know 20,000 people. No. <laughs> you know they passing out Instagram flyers and all kind. Of, never mind. Listen, y'all. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, we will see you guys on Friday with a new video. And we will also see you guys with a new podcast. Make sure you download the Scorpion Show podcast on your iPhone or on your Android yes, or wherever else you listen. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's it, you guys. You guys have a great week. Don't do nothing crazy. And enjoy the first week of October. Peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, that was fast. <laughs>